Thank you, uh, Commander Cole. It's uh, a pleasure and a moving moment for me to be on uh, the USS Ross with Ambassador David Friedman and his wife, Tammy, with uh, General Martin, with Minister Katz, with uh, the commander of our Navy, General Shavit, Admiral Shavit, with my wife, Sarah. When I was uh, elected for the first time, believe it or not, it was, uh, I think, 21 years ago. 22 already? Oh, God. How time flies when you enjoy yourself, you know. Uh, I think we had, shortly afterwards, a visit of uh, a U.S. aircraft carrier. And it was a memorable visit to see this great manifestation of American power. And uh, it's been a while, but that tradition has been refreshed recently. And this is the first visit, uh, as uh, Commander Cole said, first visit in Ashdod of an American warship in 19 years. And I think it comes at a propitious time. Uh, it comes at a time when uh, our values are tested, our interests are challenged, and there is nothing like the American-Israeli alliance, which is manifested in so many ways, but most especially in the sharing of military intelligence and in military cooperation against terror, against the aggressive force of Iran in this region. We are committed to preventing Iran from uh, expanding its empire. We want them to go back to Iran, to get out of Syria, get out of Yemen, get out of Iraq, and stop building war and misery, creating misery everywhere they go. This is a commitment that President Trump has expressed many times, and he expresses support for Israel's right to defend itself against Iran's aggression against Israel in Syria. He said, we back you 100 percent. And I believe that, in a way, this visit expresses that commitment so clearly and that partnership so well. I want to say a word about the, the Navy. Um, uh, <clears throat> I want to say a word about the Navy, the Israeli Navy, and then a word about the American Navy. My experience with uh, <clears throat> the Navy is a mixed one. Uh, I was on land forces. I was in special forces, you know. And we went in the air in helicopters. We occasionally jumped from airplanes, but we didn't really take to the sea. Well, they put me on a missile boat opposite Beirut, and I vomited my heart out. <laughs> I mean, it was very clear that wasn't for me. But then we had this special operation, which was combined between us and our naval commandos, the Navy SEALs. And there was they took us to a place in Haifa, and they tested uh, all the teams uh, in my unit, and I was a commander of a team, and to my chagrin, my team won. I mean, they cooked us, they baked us, they put pressure on us, all sorts of things like that, and we came out first, so I was immediately summoned to the Naval Commando's base on the Mediterranean, and they started teaching us how to dive, military diving, and it was just awful. And then after a month, it was great. And I had unbelievable appreciation for the skill and for the uh, uh, commitment of the Navy people in Israel. And that extends exactly to the American Navy. American naval power has changed the world. It safeguarded the world. It is uh, the force of freedom. We say we're committed to the values of freedom and liberty. But if you can't defend liberty, it's a meaningless commitment. And since America became the preeminent force in the world, it's projected American power, which means the power of freedom, to every part of the globe. We know what the world was like in the first half of the American century, of the 20th century, when America was not the preeminent power in the world, and we, we experienced the greatest tragedies in history. But from the second part of the 20th century till today, it is American power that protects American values that are universal values that we in Israel share. And the preeminent value 
as that of liberty. The U.S. Navy's role in this is enormous. It's always been enormous, and it still is. So I want to thank you on behalf of free peoples everywhere, but especially the free people of the democracy called Israel, your best ally in the world. Thank you, and welcome to Ashdod.